Hey, what up, Crusade here, and it's been a little bit longer than I feel comfortable with without uploading a video, uh, but I'm going to be showing you guys three games today. First game is going to be using, well, I'll show you, a medkit add-on. It's a very rare anti-hemorrhagic syringe, and it reduces charges in the medkit by 50%, and instantly and completely heals on secondary use. And unfortunately, when you have a medkit with this add-on, if you're downed and in dying state, you can't use it on yourself, but you can use it on another teammate that's in dying state and instantly stand them up to full health. Uh, again, by using the right click to use the medkit and then hitting spacebar to activate the add-on. And of course that uh, consumes the medkit and the add-on once you hit spacebar. But uh, if you're using this, it's really, really good to coordinate with your team, and you definitely want to let them know that you that you have this loaded into your med kit, and that if they see, uh, if that if they're dying and they see you running towards them, you know, tell them to get ready to run because you're going to be able to pop this on them, and it's, it happens very fast. And I'm going to show you how that works out in this in this uh, first game but real quick I'm also going to talk about the other add-on for the map which is very cool the glass bead and this is also a secondary ability again you hold right click to start activating the map and once the map is like activated you hit spacebar to put down a little marker and it looks like a glowing beam you'll see it in the sec second game um, again, this is another add-on that's, I mean, you really got to let your team know about this and kind of how you want to use this. I mean, if you see a glowy beam get placed down, like, somewhere in the distance, you don't have teammates over there, so it's really good if, I mean, if you have the map and you're, you know, just working on a generator and then you see a teammate get injured, uh, you can put down this marker to let that injured player know you're, like, over there and the injured player can go over there and uh, find you and hopefully you can heal him. And I also do use it for uh, helping a survivor by letting them know that I have a exit gate opened. So pretty, I mean, its usefulness can vary greatly depending on circumstances, but I mean, it is a utility. So pretty cool add-on. And we're going to go ahead and jump in the first game and show you that anti-hemorrhagic syringe. Alright, so I got that syringe loaded into my med kit here again. And I'm not going to get the best use out of it in this game. Uh, because I do heal up the lowest ranked player in this match. But I just wanted to use it because it's my first time using it. And it was a pretty good opportunity. But he wasn't ready for it. I didn't let the players know in the lobby that I had it ready and loaded so I uh, don't get the best use but I will at least get to show you the mechanic and you know how cool it is or whatever but just gonna uh, start off uh, starting getting this generator and I believe we are playing against a wraith yeah first uh, teammate got injured and quickly down there Probably got double hit with the uh, the bug, the killer bug, where he doesn't have to wipe his blade, and he's right next to hook, so he gets hooked insanely quickly. Pretty good for the killer, uh, but he does get unhooked. And the whole time, of course, it's buying his time, so I'm just working on the generator. <clears throat> Obviously, the syringe is of no use if he's hooked. And usually if a player gets downed, like he gets downed again here, uh, the syringe isn't that good because, I mean, the killer usually just pick him up, but as you see he's crawling around he's not picking up right away, so I'm like, alright, here's a perfect opportunity because he didn't see me. Bam, get him right back up instantly, and there it is. Medkit's gone, and he gets hit again. <laughs> so he, he was definitely just standing there, and he gets downed. Uh, so, <laughs> not the best use of that syringe, but 
But I guess it bought us a little time. I don't know. And he gets hooked again. And I'm like, alright, let's try and go for this unhook. And of course I take the roundabout path to the left of that combine there. You don't want to go directly towards the hook, or at least not in a predictable path. I try to take a path that's, you know, has a lot of obstruction in line of sight. There he wanders off. I was gonna go for the hook, but teammate gets it, so this guy's been saved so much and <laughs> I don't know, maybe his cat is playing for him because he gets down for like, I don't know, third or fourth time. So at this point, <laughs> we're just gonna use the time that he's buying us. Ginger, what do you want? Alright. So he gets instantly sacrificed. And we're just gonna make our way over to the next generator. Another teammate gets injured. <clears throat> and we already got a couple generators up, so getting this one was pretty safe because, you know, there's windows around. Uh, there's not too much line of sight because these walls are, I mean, you can see through these walls here. <clears throat> there's a little crack through the top of that dome there as well. It's really easy to spot through this building. And I'm not too worried because of Sprint Burst, of course. And he was stealthed, so should be able to get away pretty easy. He doesn't really, uh, he does come after us here a little bit. I think he spotted me through the window. He probably should spot me through those walls anyway, but pull a little bit of fast one. Just keep an eye on him. Of course, we could see him going through that wall, or see him through the wall. He doesn't get baited into the pallet. So we're just going to keep running. So now I'm the distraction. Actually, he didn't see me there because he saw the generator get activated and he really wanted that. So I guess that's pretty important, but that's going to allow me to get this generator here. <clears throat> and I was bugged out a little bit there. Couldn't really hear the sound, so I readjust. Didn't know if I was going to be able to hear the skill check activations with that little sound bug or not. So. And teammates come to help. There's gonna be one generator generator active or left after this. Should be easy. Uh, of course, after we've used the syringe, could uh, could have searched in that chest to get another item, so we don't come back empty-handed. But I'm not really too worried about items. And we clearly saw the wraith to the left there, so I have no idea why I'm facing the wrong way. Uh, I don't know. Wasn't paying attention, I guess. Must not have saw him. Finally, I realized he's on the other side of where I was looking. And we're just gonna wander off and look for this last generator. Hopefully we can find something here. And of course, see that lamppost over there, and guy already working on it, so should be able to get this up and running. And Exegate is right here as well, so I mean, if he sees us take this generator, he's most likely going to come to this exit gate. So if we get this generator, it's actually best if you go to the other exit gate than this generator, because you know that the killer is going to see that notification, and he's going to go for that exit gate. Um, of course I'm going to go for the other one though, and teammate gets downed, and of course if a teammate is in trouble, like dire trouble like he is now, you just want to open the exit gate, because, you know, maybe he can crawl out, or if you do rescue him, uh, you want him to be able to just run out the exit gate if he can, so he doesn't have to worry about trying to just hide from the killer, especially all injured, it's really tough to do, so exit it first uh, because you get it you get it for free so there's no reason not to open it and plus you have time since he's not picking them up for some reason uh, 
And if you're a survivor dying like this, you really need to be crawling to the like an edge of the map. I mean, you could crawl to a patch of grass in hopes that the killer doesn't have deer, deer stalker and can just spot you wherever. Uh, so it's probably your best bet to go to like just an edge of the map where he's least likely to spot you, even if he has deer stalker. Uh, but my teammate's just kind of sitting there or crawling around. I don't know. He's not. If you're just gonna sit there, I mean, you should at least be building your recover bar because I almost got him there. But, I mean, if I had finished that res there, or that heal, he would have just got downed again because the killer was so close, and I would have had to have restarted that whole heal process. So I just left him at a sliver, basically. And he's crawling away from me here. I don't know. This is He's crawling the completely wrong direction. He's crawling through the house. It's well lit. There's no grass. And... He should be crawling the completely opposite direction so I can pick him up, but uh, he kind of fails us a little bit here, and he's going to get taken to the basement because he crawled right to it. And at this point, I'm like, I'm, I thought, you know, oh, I should just get out of here, but I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll try a little sneaky move. So camp right behind there, he walks by, and I jump down a little bit. I think maybe he heard my shoes clopping when I jump down a little bit. Not entirely sure, so I should have been a little quieter there. Uh, you definitely don't want to jump down all the way because your character will make the whoa noise, and the killer's definitely going to hear that. So you definitely want to be cautious if you're going to be trying to pull a sneaky move like that. But I was going to leave, and then I'm like. You know what, let's try and get him back, because my sprint burst is almost up. And I'm basically going to try and rescue him at the very last second. So I'm waiting to see. Because he's coming back to patrol. I like, look at this, he, he's guarding, guarding. Okay, I can go, like, I don't, I don't want to hear, I don't want him to hear me stomping. But I have to go now. And actually, I was holding left click there. And... I don't know, it just stopped the animation. I felt like I should have been able to get that. But, I don't know. Fortune not on my side, maybe. I tried my best, but I'm just gonna have to get out of here, I guess. Fortunate match. Person I syringed died. Couldn't rescue that guy when I had a couple opportunities to do so, but the whole thing got botched a couple times. So that's unfortunate. Uh, but we are going to get into the next game here, and that was the anti-hemorrhagic syringe. And next game I'm going to be showing you the map marker. And again, I didn't tell my team that I had this equipped, and it's probably best idea to do that. Uh, with Survive with Friends, this is actually, it might be okay. I'm not exactly sure, because you can put down a marker and tell your friends over any sort of voice communication program you have that hey come to this marker and we can meet up and heal or just do a generator or something so the potential is there for the map marker I feel like um, but it's uh, you really have to sort of plan around it and but we'll, I guess we'll see how useful it is uh, with a pug team that doesn't really know about it probably not going to be that useful it's probably not that good in general honestly but it is pretty cool it's a unique mechanic and open that chest there toolbox so sometimes I like to open chests just so they're open and a survivor can see that there's an item there and they don't have to spend the time to open it because it is pretty loud when you're dumpster diving and just gonna go ahead and work on this generator since I'm close by. This is like the safest generator in the game because there's three windows right here. Um, some pallets on the other side of the building, on the outside. And I decided to set the marker just to see what it looks like and kind of show where I'm at. Of course, since it's inside a building, survivors aren't really gonna be able to see it. 
Uh, but the killer just climbed through the window there, and I'm just like, alright, I'm out of here. And one thing about the map marker is that, yeah, you always actually want to be uh, placing it down to where you, wherever you move to. And my teammate thinks it's some sort of, like, passageway to heaven or something, I don't know. But you always want to be moving it to where you are, because if you just leave it behind and, I mean, it's essentially a dead marker and it might throw off your team because they may think, oh, well, he's over there, so I can go over there and get healed or something. Uh, but if you've just left and you didn't move your marker with you, uh, it's going to be a bit misleading. So definitely be aware of that. I do leave it behind a couple times, but for the most part, I'm pretty good about Like right here, I set it back down. And we do have a teammate that gets injured, so I try to put it somewhere, and I try to just kind of stick around by the marker, see if he comes by so I can heal him. Uh, the problem is he doesn't even know that I have this item, and so he's probably not looking for it, and he probably doesn't even know what it is if he just sees a light up in the sky. So if you don't know what the map marker looks like, I mean, that'll, that'll help you out if you just see it randomly on the map. Uh, but another teammate gets downed, and Claudette still thinks it's some sort of healing stream or something, I don't know. And he's going to sabotage. I start to make my way over here because I know there's going to be an opportunity to do something. And plus this generator is still over here. Checking the window for a trap. It's already sabotaged so we're clear to go through. And it looks like it's at like 99% or something. And we find one of our injured teammates. I'm trying to chase him down here. And we start to get that heal. Uh, I think I still downed. I think he's gonna be transported right now. Get that guy up, and yeah, he gets hooked. But he's in the basement, and he starts to attempt escape. Does it three times. And he doesn't struggle. So he's dead. Really fast. So down to three players and three generators, kind of even, I guess. But I'm just trying to keep an eye out for the killer, just mainly see where he goes, but over by this bus here, I check to see if he trapped it. And then I decided to just keep walking around. And I see this uh, generator over here. And decided to start working on that. Alright, team gets trapped. And that's probably, that's definitely too far away for me to like race to. And I stop at the 99% there just so I can search this chest first. Uh, team gets downed, injured. They're taking a lot of damage over there. but So I don't really have to worry about taking this generator and the killer coming after me because I know he's going to be really preoccupied. Two players down now. So the killer doing a lot of stuff over here while I'm gone. So I'm going to head back over, and since there's two of them downed, he's going to have to hook one. I mean, this is an easy rescue for at least one of these guys here. The more fortunate player that didn't get picked up. And so I heal him out of dying, and I see decide to just keep healing. Problem is, is he... Killers usually know where they down a player at, and they remember. So I'm like, uh, we're kind of in the open here. And I wanted to run back a little bit, because he just finished hooking that player, and I'm thinking, well, he knows where the other guy is, so he might come back. So I'm playing really cautious here, in the event that the killer does come out and come back for the other guy that he downed, but he doesn't. Uh, so I go back in for the heal. But Claudette decides to just waste her medkit. It's fine. It's not my medkit. Uh, the other guy's already low on his sacrifice timer. I think he's attempting escape, probably. If you're in the basement, 
people usually attempt escape because uh, they feel like they have no chance otherwise. And I'm not. I thought maybe the killer's in the basement, but he's right behind me. Luckily, he misses the. I see that trap at that window, so it's a good thing I didn't jump through that window. And since we scouted this bus earlier, we know. I mean, we know it's pretty unlikely that it's trapped, so we're safe to jump through here a little bit. <clears throat> and this pallet right there that I was at, and that, that I'm looking at right now, that pallet is incredibly dangerous to bait because of that wall on the outside. So I really, you really do not want to bait that pallet. Just a little FYI there, because you could <laughs> killer not looking the right direction, get stunned. But um. <clears throat> the killer could just hide, be hide behind that outside wall and you can't know which direction he's going to come from if he's hiding his red light correctly and he could just fly around the corner and he will get a hit on you so do not beat that pallet in that uh, little portion of the school bus and of course we pop that uh, generator it's already at 99% because I'm expecting my teammate to have another generator up soon. Uh, so I'm hiding here. I've, this is the part where I, I realized I forgot to keep laying my marker down. So I reset it um, right next to the exit gate because that's where I'm camping. And this is the exit gate that I want to open. Uh, so basically, it's I'm putting it down to let my teammate know that this exit gate, you know, I'm over here and it's going to be opened. And once I do open it, instead of going inside and hiding behind those little brick walls, you kind of trap yourself. Um, so I hide behind this rock that's near the exit, but not inside of it. Because if he comes in there and looks for you and he has no one escapes death 3, uh, you're probably not going to get out unless you just run straight for the exit as he's passing like the gate <clears throat> so this way I can you know stick it a little bit because he did search behind those little brick walls so I can stick around and make sure my teammate gets out with me and we'll just reset the marker just to I mean if he sees it and he sees it move he'll know that I'm still there but again I don't know if he sees it but he he walks over here and I, I don't know maybe he did see it so uh, that was the map marker in that game it got virtually no use as far as I can tell especially since I did forget about it about halfway through the game but uh, maybe it was survive, survive with friends it may, may be more useful maybe not I don't think it's too good because I'm not really sure how t how noticeable it is from range didn't really check but it doesn't look like it's that noticeable. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and get into a third game actually. And I'm gonna we're gonna talk about a specific mechanic and what to do in a certain situation. So let's go ahead and get in that game. All right, and so we're on the farm map here. I brought a flashlight. This uh, particular game isn't about the item though. It is about a specific mechanic, and I will get to that in a bit. But as we all spawned here, I hear start to hear the heartbeats, and I don't know that the killer isn't occupied with chasing anyone. Anyone, so I'm really ready. I was ready to uh, start running or hiding or whatever. But those guys stick that generator, and that's cool. I'm gonna get on this generator, and I start to hear heartbeats again. I get that skill check, and of course I want to finish that skill check and then get off. Uh, but I'm looking around because I. Actually, I have no idea where he's at. I'm not really checking the best angle here, but I do want to be near this pallet. I'm gonna decide to get back on the generator. And we do hear him again. And I think he hears the generator, so he knows someone's around. And I mess up my pallet there end up taking a hit for it. So it's definitely good to know your pallet mechanics. Uh, could make a video on that later to explain in depth how they work specifically. Uh, but 
I'm injured, so I don't want to stop sprinting. I see that generator get taken over there, so I know my teammates are over there. And I check this window real fast, and I see that there's a trap here, so I really want to disarm it, to throw the killer off, and that's an extremely dangerous trap on that window, so I want to help my team by disarming that. But I, I sprint away from it, because I'm hoping that my trail is going to be cold by the time I, the killer gets there. And if I'm injured, I cannot be stealthy anyway, so you can't afford to walk anywhere, really. Uh, but I found my team, they heal me up, and of course there's three of them, so there's no room for me on the generator, so I go off to do meg things. And just keeping an eye out. I'm the shack's over here, so I decide to, you know, check the shack, scout it out, see if there's a trap. I stop right before that pallet, because I don't want to just run into trap if one's there, check both sides of the window and it's clear. The shack isn't really that great considering you know, the other options on this map, like the windows in this uh, the slaughterhouse here and the uh, tree with the cows. But I'm just walking around, I'm gonna check this window probably, yep, it's not trapped. But I see a teammate gets trapped over here, so I'm like, okay, maybe I can make this before the killer. So I sprint towards him, and he's close, and teammate untraps himself, so I'm like, alright. Uh, but unfortunately, he runs right to the killer's arms, picks him up, and I'm lining myself up for this flashlight. And I try to blind him, it's such a short distance, and he's not looking at me. So flashlight is useless. That's the only time that the flashlight could be useful. And all he has to do is look away. So if he's remotely aware, uh, the killer can just prevent the usage of the flashlight. And exit gates get powered and he gets close. So I sprint burst away. And I'm thinking he's chasing me, but he sees Jake over there. One hit downs him. So I know he has no one escapes at three. So I'm like, shit, I got to get out of there now. He starts running to cut me off. So I'm trying to juke here, but he reads the juke. <laughs> And I get one hit down as well. So I'm like, shit. Claudette says shit and tries to attempt escape because realizes that chances are slim at this point. Our only chance is if Bosco comes to rescue like one of us because he can't tend to all of us. But you see him run off there because he knows that it's no one escapes death 3 and the rule of thumb for no one escapes death 3 is just get out. Because it's so dangerous to try to do anything else and when you're in dying state here you just want to get away uh, at first you want to get to an edge of the map go through grass get behind line of sight but you definitely want to be in a corner of the map or at the very edge like I'm going at right here and I was going to the exit gate uh, of course it's not opened if it was opened I could escape uh, so I know that the, the other exit gate's on the other side of the map, and I'm not going to be able to probably get over there. There's no point in recovering. If there are survivors up, and you see me sprint bursting there while crawling, which is a cool mechanic if you hold shift while crawling, and you have sprint burst. But if you're in dying state, you want to get to the corner of the map, and then you want to recover. Don't just like sit there and recover right where the killer downed you at. But really my only chance of survival right now is if I find the trapdoor because I'll probably bleed out before I can get to the other side of the map there. And the trapdoor can spawn in some pretty weird places and we hear it open right over there. So we're gonna crawl over here and there's no signs of the killer. I'm gonna sprint crawl to it. <laughs> A little bit issue with the prompt to escape. No, I don't want to recover. I just want to get out of there. And I finally slither out. So, definitely don't give up hope if you're in dying state. And keep on trying. Uh, the killer didn't have deer stalker. So that might have uh, might have prevented me from escaping. If he had that perk, deer stalker is really good <clears throat> for the killer in situations like that. Uh, but obviously no one escapes death 3 also incredibly strong as proven right there uh, but that wraps up this video and i hope you guys learned something and enjoyed watching and i'll see you guys in the next video